So your virtual assistant quit or maybe you are just not happy with your current VA anymore. Things change, things move around, life happens. You've tried everything to support them and get them back to align with your goals and it just didn't work. Things happen. Today, I'm going to show you how you can manage a virtual assistant handoff and how clients of mine were able to shift complete teams in no time. Life happens. Your virtual assistant might have decided they are going a different route. They are focusing on a different niche. They don't want to do VA anymore. Whatever it is, life happens. So let's talk about how you can easily manage a handoff where a team member leaves the team and you now suddenly potentially overnight have to replace that team member, hand off processes or even potentially have to completely replace teams, a complete team, multiple people. Now the struggle with this is that you often enough don't just hand off one process at a time where it's like, especially with content creation, there is the YouTube creation, there is the graphic design, there is the freebies, there is podcast recording, there is social media, there are so many different processes that are all happening at the same time that handing these off can be quite overwhelming. And usually when you do a planned handoff, you go one piece at a time and one process. Okay, we start you with the graphic design, go do the thumbnails, and then we move into handing off the podcast. And sometimes that's simply not possible. Where you're like, oh my God, how am I gonna do all of this? I'm bringing in a complete new team. Somebody is taking off our mobile, multiple processes. We don't have time for this. Life is crazy. Business just tripled. Let's take a breath. I'm gonna show you exactly how we made it happen with multiple team members multiple processes, handing them off in no time. Number one, you gotta have your shit together. You need your standard operating procedures. You need to have your processes in place. You need to have your task templates in place. You need to have your automations in place and you need to have your resources ready, AKA your company hub where everything is. Now that's a lot. Yes. If you're a smaller business and you're literally just replacing one virtual assistant, it's fine. You just need to have your SOPs and processes ready. If you have automations running, make sure you update the assignee from your old virtual assistant to your new virtual assistant. Again, I have so many videos on the channel that help you set all of this up in ClickUp and have this ready. We are not going to dive deeper into this today. Where this comes in and where the most struggles is happening is not the resources. My clients have their resources ready. I have my resources ready. Where the struggle comes in is the personal aspect and the human aspect of handing all of this off. You are suddenly dealing with a new virtual assistant that hasn't worked with you yet, that wants to serve you, that wants to give you the best. And they might be feeling, first of all, like they need to get it right for the first time. In this process of handing off your processes, make sure your new team members feel like they don't have to get it right for the first time. They will try. If you hired right and if you did what I told you to do when hiring, we have a video about that, then your team member will want to work with you and will want to be perfect in the beginning. Give them time and peace to know it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm pretty sure you are not a heart surgeon. Things happen. It's fine. It makes us all personable. Also, there is no such thing as being perfect. So really assure them and give them the confidence that they are at the right place, working with the right people, and everything will be fine and turning into a well oil machine. Have those communication, praise them, let them know when they're doing well. And when they're coming with questions, don't be like, that's a dumb question or that's a dumb idea. No, we iterate on it, work with them. Number two is make them also feel like they can ask you questions. There is often, especially in the niche of virtual assistants, where we are hiring overseas they might just feel like they're gonna get fired if they ask simply because they don't have the same upbringing they don't have the same background they don't have the same personality as we have 
So you as a leader, it is your responsibility to create that psychological safety of them knowing just because something didn't work as expected, they're not going to get fired over it. Not only that, it creates a level of peace, a level of peace for you and a level of peace for members. They're not coming in and, oh my God, am I going to get fired today? What is happening? But it also gives you as the leader the peace of knowing it's all going to be fine. With junior team members and especially new hires, you might also be running into imposter syndrome where they're like, I'm new in this position. I don't know how, what, where the process is. So giving them the standard operating procedures and reiterating that they are in the right position and you are there to help them. You are not there to do their job. You are not there to micromanage them. You are there to support them and step into this awesomeness that you see in them and why you hired them. And don't forget, in some cultures, admitting not knowing can be seen as shameful and losing face. So this perceived risk of losing your job in imposter syndrome might actually be quadruple and five times than what you are experiencing as a leader. Make sure you are there to support them and give them that piece of you are here to learn and I'm here to support you. Let's get this done together. With that cultural difference, they might also be over focusing on the result meaning I just need to get this done rather than really learning the process, how the process works and, and what goes into it and maybe even updating and making your process better. It's just, I need to get this done this way. And it's rigid and not fluid, which actually can hurt you. So again, really make sure you are speaking to that personality and give them the assurance that something goes out, you're not just going to fire them. To dive deeper a little bit into this different countries, different perceptions, I work a lot with Filipinos and their culture. Now, one of the things that I had to learn is they're not getting fired. There is this cultural thing over there where when you work for a Filipino company, they just don't give you work. They just don't give you work and expect you to just quit at some point because you feel unworthy to deliver for the company. Again, this is in my words. This is how this story stuck in my head. But yeah, it's like you are not getting fired. You're going to quit at some point because you can't provide any value because you are not getting any work. So don't assume that you are overflowing people and you're giving them too much. So you are not doing anything. Have that open dialogue, have that open discussion and step into it with empathy and an open mind to understand potential cultural differences that you have no idea about. And having those conversations and learning about their culture will also really build that trust where now you have a team member that's going to stuck around, that is in it for the passion for your business and you are getting way better results out of them than when they are just killing time. Everything is always trial and error. Just Go with the flow and really build that bond with your team. Last but not least, have stand-ups. Stand-ups are check-in calls. They could be just a message on Slack to quick check-in of what are you doing today or weekly or monthly calls to really talk about what's going on and have this conversation. It allows you to actively ask, what are you struggling with right now? What can we celebrate you for? How can I support you as a leader? I am here to help you get this done. You are not just here to take work off my back. So especially in the beginning, when you potentially switch complete teams and multiple processes, have quick daily check-ins where it's a Slack channel and somebody leaves a quick message. I'm doing this, 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 and that. I'm struggling with that. I could use some help with that. Really quick and simple, takes just a few minutes and it really helps keep this momentum going of knowing what is happening in this process. Then have weekly stand up calls to really go through. Where is the team at? What are they potentially struggling with? What can we celebrate them for? What are they working on? Which SOPs potentially need updates? 
what has happened last week, what needs to happen next week and really build this consistent and predictable trust and working together and collaboration for you to be able to do this. I promise you when you are paying attention to all of these things and you have your physical assets ready, your SOPs, your automations, your checklist, and you are giving them the personal attention of speaking to the human and supporting them with having the physical resources to get their job done. Now suddenly switching complete teams and replacing your virtual assistant because they just switched what they want to do. Really easy and simple. And now to continuously help your team really be efficient and give them the support they need and deserve. I have a playlist for you right here that gives you all the ins and outs on SOPs and company hubs and all the things and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any video and can continuously learn ClickUp and scale your business.